Well, we know the fans are excited for this one, and no one is more excited than former Husky Brock Heward. He joins us now, and Brock, uh, let's look back before we look ahead. Did that game against Texas go just as you thought? Well, Sylvia, I know you're so busy that you don't go back and listen to everything that we talk about on these Zooms. And I think I okay, told cool. you the game would be in the 30s. I think I predicted a one-score Husky win, but, you know, who am I to toot? You know, it's always better to have somebody else toot your horn. So I don't want, want to be the one to, to toot my horn, but Texas moved the ball up and down the field. But the two takeaways, and that's what that defense seemingly does every week. They find a way to make a play. And then Michael Penix, his star has never shined brighter. He played his best game at the biggest moment, and he's going to have to do it again Monday night. Well, we know it's a battle of unbeatens, Brock. Washington, Michigan bring a lot to the table. Uh, what do you think of this matchup? I mean, these two teams, Paul, are so similar in a ton of ways. Now, not in their scheme and in their style. Michigan wants to pound the football, squeeze the clock, play an NFL-style game. Kalen wants to throw it, and obviously he's got one of the great ones to ever do it. Washington's been much more tested. Michigan's blown a lot of bad teams out in the Big Ten. Um, but I'll say it again, like last week, this can come down to the fourth quarter, and this will probably come down to a possession, a decision, a play. I think that four-point spread's about right, and, uh, well, if the Huskies keep doing what they've been doing all season long, they will prove those doubters, and they will prove those boys in Vegas wrong that they doubted them one last time too many. Well, Brock, we saw the Huskies pass offense pretty much exploit the Texas defense. The Texas pass defense was weak. Michigan has a much better pass defense, though, huh? Yeah, I've heard that. I don't know if I necessarily totally believe that. Michigan has faced two teams this year, Paul, that rank in the top 50, the top 50 of total offense. That's Ohio State and Alabama, and neither of those were really juggernauts offensively. Michigan has seen nothing like this. Now just keep this in the back of your mind Monday night, Mr. Sylvie. Keep in mind those legs of Michael Penix, because he showed last weekend in the semis that, you know what, this dude can still run. He only runs when he has to run. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Michael Penix use that athleticism and use that speed and legs that he still has in his holster. Okay, Brock, just like last week, I got to ask you how you see this game going. Washington, Michigan, who wins it? I think if the Huskies get to 30, they win. That game was going to be in the 30s and it's pretty darn close to that last week. If they get to 30, they can win this game 30 to 24. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I'm going to be there, be sitting with a lot of old teammates, a lot of old Husky fans, a lot of Husky people that. I don't think in their wildest dreams, imagine a 14-0 season like this, a chance for perfection, a chance for, frankly, the greatest season in the history of the university. And uh, I'm sure hoping I'm right, and we'll get to witness it Monday night. Brock, thanks for joining us. I know you're going down there. Have a great time, and I sure hope your prediction is right. I hope so, too, man. Uh, you know, I think we all anticipated maybe the Seahawks taking the next step, and they still can, and hopefully they make the playoffs. But these Huskies have just been an unbelievable story. So have fun too, Polly. We'll uh, be in touch, buddy.